NASA finally awarded SpaceX a $1 billion, $150 million contract for a second crewed Starship moon, landing eight months after stating its desire to do so, bringing the total amount of their HLS contract to about $4 billion, $200 million. In order to maximize the return on program investments, NASA has exercised a built-in right to change its April 2021 contract with SpaceX for the human landing system, Option A. Known as Option B, NASA's contract modification gives SpaceX the approval and resources it needs to get ready for a second crewed Starship moon landing, which is planned for no earlier than 2024, in addition to an uncrewed Starship moon landing planned for no earlier than 2024 and a crewed demonstration that could land two NASA astronauts on the moon as early as 2025. The Option B contract will enable SpaceX and NASA to develop and demonstrate modifications that will make Starship an even more capable and cost-effective moon lander in addition, guaranteeing the Artemis IV mission astronauts a ride to the lunar surface. When NASA initially declared its plan to add a second rudimentary lunar landing to SpaceX's current HLS contract, the agency was unable to provide any details regarding the potential timing of that landing or the Artemis mission it would be tied to. Another release two months earlier, stating that NASA no longer anticipated a lunar landing to be combined with its Artemis IV mission, contributed to some of that doubt. Moreover, NASA appeared to confirm that there would be a period of time between the first crewed lunar landing of Starship and the second crewed moon landing as well, which would employ an unidentified lander five days after announcing their plans for a second crewed Starship moon landing in March 2022. However, NASA has thankfully dropped plans to purposefully space out moon landings as of November 2022. As part of NASA's Artemis 3 and 4 missions, SpaceX's Starship is now under contract to support back-to-back -back rudimentary moon landings no earlier than 2025 and 2027. Although it's unclear how or why NASA was able to make that adjustment, it's unquestionably an improvement over the previous situation. Additionally, NASA and SpaceX will collaborate to demonstrate new features and advancements on the second planned lunar landing of the spaceship. The Artemis IV Starship will be enhanced with the capacity to carry more NASA astronauts, four instead of just two, and more cargo to the lunar surface, whereas the Artemis III landing will be as minimal as is physically possible. It's not totally clear, but according to the reports, NASA only plans to land 180 kilograms, or approximately 400 pounds of goods with the first SpaceX Starship, a spacecraft that is probably capable of landing multiple astronauts, as well as dozens of tons of freight. Future sustainable lander missions, which Starship's Option B landing may or may not fall under, will carry up to one ton, or roughly 2,200 pounds of cargo to and from the lunar surface, according to NASA. The NASA Lunar Gateway will also be accessible to the Artemis IV Starship. Gateway will be a tiny deep space station situated in an odd high moon orbit. Its main purpose is to provide a destination for the Orion crew capsule and NASA's Space Launch System rocket. The European service module of the Orion spacecraft performs at less than half the level of NASA's defunct Apollo service module and is roughly two times as hefty as its Apollo equivalent. Physically speaking, Orion as a whole is unable to deliver astronauts or itself to the Apollo program's more straightforward low lunar orbits. Instead, Orion's lapses must be made up by NASA's upcoming moon landers. In addition to landing on the moon, spending a week there, and then launching back into lunar orbit, the Starship will be in charge of picking up people in a lunar near rectilinear halo orbit, transporting them to low lunar orbit, and returning them to the NRHO gateway will be equally unimpressive until it receives a slight update in the late 2020s or early 2030s. In fact, that's a big part of the significance of the Starship docking at the Gateway. SpaceX and NASA have decades of experience docking with space stations and launching new spacecraft from them. However, these satellites were usually lighter and smaller than the stations they were joining. Starship will probably weigh several times more than the little station, making docking considerably more difficult than it is now even if the Gateway is fully furnished with a variety of international modules. While the Gateway is unlikely to ever have more than a few dozen cubic meters of usable space, the moon lander variation of a spaceship may also have a cabin of hundreds of cubic meters. However, the station would become far more livable the moment a Starship docked. The second crew Starship and Artemis IV are expected to land on the moon as early as 2027, according to NASA.
But a space prophet recently told RS Technicus Eric Berger that Artemis 3, the mission preceding Artemis 4, is unlikely to launch before 2028. The space prophet previously predicted in 2017 that NASA's SLS launch debut would slip from 2019 to around 2023 and predicted that SpaceX alone would win NASA's moon lander contract. The sources forecast at the time bordered on speculation and opinions, yet they finally turned out to be startlingly accurate. If their third prophecy proceeds in the same manner, only time will tell. In any case, the Apollo program was completed on schedule and on budget by this generation, not your grandparents. NASA operated in the 1960s, a very different age with a bloated budget, a geopolitical imperative, and a presidential directive to complete a lunar landing by the decade's end. In comparison to federal funding, the agency receives a far smaller budget now, and the external pressures pushing NASA toward the moon landing date are under much less stress. The basic line is that missing 2025 has no meaningful repercussions. Despite some huffing and puffing, Artemis is a good option for the space agency's plans for human exploration. The initiative has the support of its international partners, and since there aren't many viable alternatives, most people will just shrug and put up with the delays. 2028 is probably a relatively reasonable estimate for Artemis 3, given the bloat and delay built into most significant space missions today. It's likely where I'd start as well, but the space profit didn't end there. I'm not sure if it will be aboard the SLS, but it might occur in 2028, he said. Concerns concerning the SLS and Orion hardware safety are always warranted. Yes, these are enormous cars, obviously complicated machines that will only seldom at most fly once a year. This launch system will always be experimental at such a flight rate. 2028 is a very distant year. Depending on how smoothly the SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft programs operate, a lot might happen in the following five years. Whether SpaceX is able to successfully launch Starship into the air, how the political and economic climate in the United States changes. Of course, NASA will have a hard time convincing senators to support a SpaceX-only lunar trip. But eventually, pragmatism turned Trump into a political force. Unfortunately, these are factors that not even the supreme space prophet can foresee with his cosmic third eye. This pretty much wraps it up for today's episode. Hopefully, you all learned something new with today's video. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section below. We'd love to hear your input on this matter, and we'll be responding to a lot of your comments. Before we wrap up, it would mean the world to us if you all pounded the like and subscribe button. Our hearts are always full from your care, enthusiasm, and support. I guess it's farewells for now. Till the next video drop, you all take care.